Hello everybody and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at different events in Game Maker. So I'm not going to go through every event because there are quite a few, but I'll go through the main ones. So to start off with, we have the create event. This is the basic sort of event that, that occurs once. Right when you basically load up your game, the create event for your objects are going to run first. And that's where you set up your variables, you get things rolling, and you get things started, but it's for anything that you just want to happen once. Then we have the destroy event here. So the destroy event occurs once the object in the game is destroyed. And this happens when you, from maybe a different object, cause it to be destroyed, or from inside this object, you can do instance underscore destroy. And anything in here, you can use, you know, to clean up things, get rid of things that your object created or whatever. And yeah, anything like that. And cleanup is similar to destroy, but it's when the game is exited or anything like that. And the step events, these are the main events for your game. So this is the sort of stuff that runs every single frame of your game. So if your game is in 60 FPS, so 60 frames per second, this will be running 60 times every single second. So this is where you put your movement code, this is where you put all kinds of stuff. And to go along with that, there's also a begin step and end step for the step event. So if you want something to happen right before all your step event code, or right after, you can use those. And really there's no difference between putting the code in front of the step or behind it for one object. And the alarm events, these are events that I don't really use too much, but some people use them a lot. But basically, it's just a way to have stuff happen maybe every second, every other second. And I can go into more detail in a different video. But anyways, here are the draw events. So when it comes to draw events, this is anything that you want to display on the screen. Or for example, if you want to have a text box with dialogue, you're going to need to use these events. Because step is only to run calculations and code and stuff like that. But the draw events, they're far more intensive. You don't want to put you don't want to put your movement code or anything like that, because everything that happens in the draw event requires more CPU or GPU usage. I'm not exactly sure which one, but either way it, it requires a lot more usage. So the basic draw event, you can do something like you can draw a rectangle on the screen, you can do anything like that. There's also the draw GUI event, so you can, so basically what this does is it draws above everything else, so you can put like menus and stuff above the game. And there's also very specific begin and end events, which are the same thing, in window resize. So here we have the mouse events. So something very important to know with the mouse events is the difference between all of these and all of the global events. So basically, what left down is going to do is if I am playing the game and I click on this object, this event is going to run if I press the left mouse button down. Now, the difference between this and the global, the global left down, for global left down, if I press anywhere on the screen, the code will run. Now, this is a very important thing to know because, of course, you don't want to get it mixed up. And then with key down, any time that you press any of these buttons down, it will run. And it will keep on running because the key is down. And for the key pressed, it will only happen the one instant that it is pressed. So this will only be run once. This will be run for as long as you hold it down. If you hold it down for two seconds, then this code will run 120 times if you have 60 frames a second. So the key up is the same way, it's just right when you release the button. And then for gestures, these are very specific, you know, to touch screen sort of code. And then we have the same thing, so if you tap on this exact object, then you'll run the tap, but if you tap anywhere on the screen, you'll want to use global tap. And then collisions, so if you are colliding with other objects, you're going to be able to use these collision events. You also have code to test for collisions too. And these other events, these are for just any sort of stuff. They're self-explanatory, like room start and room end. 
and then views so you have the different views in game maker too so if you're outside of one of the views you know you can use these and the asynchronous events these are the the most um, maybe complicated but basically these are these are just different things that really have nothing to do with game maker but game maker has some connection to for example with game maker you can use steam you can put your game onto steam you know so you can use this to connect up to steam and maybe run special things through that because yeah the asynchronous and what asynchronous really means is that this runs separately this isn't because all these other code code pieces here all these different events when game maker is running it's going through them over and over again and before it can go to the dry event it has to go through the step event like right here based off of this sort of diagram but the asynchronous events are different so sometimes when you use an asynchronous system the asynchronous thing can halt everything or it can run in the background it's just it's just completely separate so you should really research these before you start using them and you shouldn't need to use them too much because stuff like networking social steam and system these are all very these are for more expert users so yeah anyone anytime you use it you should be very well researched in what you're doing and you probably already have a game going pretty well if you're using those because well you should never really start your game out by connecting it to steam that's more of a later game process so yeah those are the basic events that are in game maker and every single one has a specific purpose some are a lot more useful than others for the most part you'll be sticking to the step events the create and destroy and you'll also be using alarm and draw and then whatever your input is will depend on which one of these you're using and game maker studio 2 has really been pushing gesture events the first one i don't think has any sort of gesture events but these can be very useful so I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.